Hello, everyone. Too loud, right? Um, uh, this is the topic of the lecture. Uh, it's always about events, event driving architecture. I think API are becoming more and more popular, but why? Né? And is all it is all about. Uh, first of all, this is me. I am Ana Borges, I'm from Brazil. So please, sorry for my English. I am API specialist at Sensidia, and I am a cat person. Uh, no one asking, but this is my babies. Uh, and this is my social media, arroba uh, Paulo Simichelli, I am two persons. Um, do you know about Sensidia? Anyone here know Sensidia? No, you know not Ah, good, good. So Sensidia is a poor play API. Everything you do is about API. We offer a product, API management, and we offer also uh, consulting services for help our customer to quit uh, your digital experience and all these stuffs. Uh, we have presence in He, in Europe, in Latin. We have more than 100 customers, and we host one of the largest events about API on the world, the Apix, APIX. And we have a recognition from the market too. So, why is this all coming back? Events is not a new thing. Uh, since I come from college, I know about that, I hear about that. But why is coming back right now? Uh, now we have a lot of things with IoT, uh, streaming, and this stuff. So with business events, we can receive this information more fast and analyze it with more uh, difficulty. So, what is event-driven architecture? Events. Events every action that generates a systemic change. So, I'm moving here on this, this stage is a, a event. But when we work with uh, architecture, uh, event-driven architecture, we don't want to know everything. We want to know what is important for our business. So, we have the business event are the, the events that have a significance for us. It's like a order for our customer, a product change, and a bank payment, for example. So EDA, uh, event-driven architecture, is about uh, producing, detecting, and reacting to these events. So like you, all architecture, we have some topology, right? This is the topology of event-driven architecture. We have, have points. See, we have the event generator. They are responsible for making the events, send the events for someone. It's like a customer service. We can make this, send some events about changes of the customer data. It's like it, they change the address, and this, this is the address. We have the event consumers. They are the stakeholders of the events. Uh, in an insurance scenario, we can say that quotation service is a stakeholder. Because if the customer changes the address, we need to recalculate the insurance rate because they can make change on the value. And we have mediator or broker. They are responsible for receiving the event from the generators and send the events from the consumers. Here we have both way from the setup uh, because the, we can do pull and or push in the event mediator or broker. All depends how you want to implement this. Okay? Uh, so when you use one or when you use another, when are you use mediator and when are you use broker? Let's see a little more. Uh, this is the mediator. Uh, the mediator is when we need to do some orchestration on our, on our events, right? It's like, ah, I need to check if something's happened with one processor. If it does, I need to do something else. So we have four main components in this topology. We have the event queue, we have the event mediator, the channels, and the processor. Uh, the stream of events starts when the generator sends the events to the event queue. The event mediator goes to the queue and gets this event. When he gets these events, he knows all the logic they need to do. Uh, he knows all the steps. 
he don't have any logic. You know, for example, in an insurance, in an insurance uh, scenario, we need to do, we need to verify first if the quotation, if the quotation was changed, for then we notify the customer. It's like this scenario. We have a change of address here. We have a change of address from the user. The user of the insurance company changed the address. And now the customer service would send an event for the, the queue. After that, the event mediator will know about the event. They will send first a notification for quotation service. Quotation says will do his job. He gonna look if they have a change of the value of the rate. If it, this does, if this change, he will send a notification from event mediator saying, ah, look, the customer X need to change the value. And then the mediator knows that notification says must act. So he wanna send a notification from notification says. If the, the rate has not changed, uh, if the customer changed from a place that not uh, impact on his insurance rate, we don't need change the, we don't need to send a message to notification service. So our processing will stop uh, in this part. So far so good, are you okay? Uh, ah, one thing, the processor should not depend on any other processor. For example, quotation service should not depend on notification service for work. They need to do our, uh, his own job, okay? And we have the broker. The broker is when we don't need to do any logical thing. Uh, we don't need to send first for one processor, then for another. Uh, it's like this simple. We can implement, do the implementation with ActiveMQ, Google, Google PubSub. So we have the events will be sent to event broker and the event processors will be listening. They can be notified or we can notify them. It all depends how you implement it. And the event processor will do his job. Using the same example that working before, we have the customer change of address. We will send the customer service, we will send a notification for quotation Kiwi. The quotation service will listen to the queue and he do his job. He will see, ah, this customer changed for a more dangerous place, so the insurance hater of them is going to hide us. He's going to pay so much more. Then he will send a notification for notification queue send, ah, look, this customer needs to pay more. And notification service will send a notification from our customer. If, for example, the quotation service uh, realized that has no change, they will finish the processing right here, and notification, and you do not post information on in quotation service, in quotation Kiwi, notification Kiwi. That's here, okay? So, what are the principles of the EDA? Right. The first one is report current events. We always need to notify when something happening. When we are working with EDA or event directory, we standard some things you, that we're gonna be events. So everything this happened, we need to notify. Uh, it's a notification. The processor should always send notification for the generator always send notification for processor, not the other way around. Uh, the processor should not send message for, for the producer. Needs respond immediately. Once uh, the processor send the notification, we need to do something. When processor get the message, he needs to know what to do. For example, if they don't need to do anything, he needs to know, he needs to do this. So he need to take some action. Even these actions means do nothing. Uh, a communication follows only one direction. Uh, since the, pro the 
processor send the notification, send the message. The processor should be following his life like it's nothing happening. He's, it's like fire forget. And the mediator or broker are, are responsible for do the other job, guarantee the processor will receive the message. And it's, it's command free. An event should, not, should never uh, send the processor do something. He needs to say, ah, look, customer X changed the address, and that's it. The processor should know what to do with the, the message, okay? Because when you put some commands, we need to change every time. We need to put some new consumers, and this is not good. Unmute. Uh, and well, when we work with every architecture, we have some standards. And with the EDA, it's not be different. We have event notification, we have event carry state transfer, and we have event sourcing. We're going to see a little more about them right now. So, event notification. Uh, when a producer, when we work with event notification, it's like uh, the customer service, we will send a notification for another, and uh, you just say, ah, customers X, change the address. And it's like this. We have address change. Uh, before that, think of me of a hypothetical scenario. Uh, one store, the store of sneakers, want to share their data with uh, the market, with the partners. And so they want to expose an if a broker for, us for people who come there and get more information. And one of the interested is the banks, for example, because it's more easy for me to change my address when I'm in a store of sneakers, then change my address in the bank. So we have this use case. I do a change of my address in the customer service of the store. And the, the customer service will update the information in the storage, and they will send a notification. It's like customers X change their data to my event broker. The stakeholders will be listening. And for example, the banking service know this customer. They know the customer X is a customer from them. So he gonna to, he, if he, he wants to know more about the changing, he goes to an interface, an interface that customer service will provide, like get customer's X and see what is changed. If it, they don't wanna know about the information, they don't care, they don't know who is the customer's X, they don't go. So, like pros, we have we do the uncoupling from receiver to sender. Uh, the sender don't need to know more about the receiver. They don't need to wait for processing and nothing like that. But like cons, the producer may be overloaded. Because we need to go every time the notification came to banking service. If I want to know more, I need to go again and again for X, Y, and all the customers I want. So if I have uh, multiple stakeholders, they want to know about the same notification, maybe my producer can be overloaded. Okay? We have event carry stage transfer. Is when we say that someone has changed and we say what's changed. Okay, so in the same scenario, we have uh, the customer changed the address. And different from the event notification, we say customer is X update the zip code 2123. And then the bank says, we can do all the processing they want without need to go to the customer service. And they, 
bank service can the bank service can store the information for when they need they can get more fastly they don't need to go to customer service for more information why right so like pros we gain resilience since we don't have to go more to the customer services they can be out and we can keep doing our job we don't need more information from them uh, we as you ever noticed we reducing the producer requisition overload we don't need to go there anymore so they can keep doing his job without um, caring about us but like cons we can say the information replication uh, I will gonna be the information here here and here and so we need to care about the consistency of the data uh, if this guy changed the information for for example in the banking services and change comes to me a new update from the customer service what do I need to consider so it's a thing we need to keep in mind and event sourcing event sourcing is when we want to store uh, the events in some place, in a database, a repository, for have more information. It's like something's happened with our system and we need to rebuild them. We can use event search for this. So, in the same scenario, uh, we have other change for a customer. We have the customer service updating our database. And we send an uh, event call address change for, NOS, for our event data source for we if you wanna in the future we can restore everything uh, a good example of event sourcing is git the github is an example of event data sourcing event sourcing we can rebuild everything from beginning to end with the information that we are putting there uh, like pros, we have the audit. Uh, we, when we want to know about something that's happening, we can go to the repository and know about the information and the bug. Uh, it's an issue when we work with uh, event driven because the, the information are distributed. We have a lot of place of information. So when we work with uh, event sourcing, we can plug the repository of uh, data sourcing and rebuild our, our program or everything with uh, step by step and see what's happening. And like Chrome's, we, it's not a very familiar. Uh, when you look for some documentation in the internet, we don't have so much uh, because it's new and the people ha have a little afraid of implementing this, and you need to define your event schema. What are you gonna put on the event data source? Every event is coming for you, you're gonna put, or just a few. This, this needs to be uh, very specified. So far so good? Yeah? Okay. So a sync API has, have you gone to the meeting early from France? Ah, que bueno. uh, so, it's a documentation, it's a specification. Um, we need to do the unification of the things for we can talk with everyone. It's a language of... Um, the Sync API is focused on the application and the other channels that it uses to communicate it. Uh, it's a way to help all of all us developers to know what to do when we have to consume in um, Kiwi, in uh, public server from Google. It's important, it's like uh, open API spec. Uh, it's, important, it's important for us know what to do. And uh, it's help us to define the event payload definition, channel, name, the context, everything. Uh, is for helping us to communicate better. This is the extrude structure. 
We have a place to put. We have a place to put the information, basic information, data of service like host, security need to use, uh, channel, that data about the channels publishing the subscriber. We have place to put the data of the messages, the information of thread, heads, payloads. And look a little more close. Uh, this is a place where we can put the information about servers. We can do the address, the port, uh, the security we want, how flow we will need to follow. And we have also the documentation from operation specifically. We have the operation name, we have the description what of this operation does, we have the content we need to send for example, like payload for this operation, we need to send the command and the sent at. No. Okay. No, it's over, but I'm going to speak from here. Uh, so, the pros and cons. Pros, we reduce the coupling. We don't have more our sender attached to the receiver. We work with a sync operation. It's easy to add a new customer. Since you are following the concept of not sending a command and yes, sending a message, uh, for us, adding new customers, adding new consumers is very easy. You just plug in and consuming, do what you want with the information. And we are highly scalable and distributed. And like cons, we can say they may lead to lost information. If it, there is no one listening to your channel, that information you may be lost. Uh, it can add more complexity if it poorly implemented, but what architecture cannot, right? And it's a challenge for data and governance because we, the information are distributed. So we don't know where the information are coming, are, from, are going, so it can be a trick for this. And now, first you need to understand you need because it's not because an event are coming to hype right now, you need to use them. If you have a need, if you really need to have a problem, you need to choose the best architecture. Maybe if you use a synchronous architecture, it's be the best way. You don't need to use EDA for this. But you see, is EDA you need, uh, so you need to choose a standard a partner, you do event notification or you do transferring all the information. And, and uh, you need to choose the best tool in the market, in the market for do this for you. Uh, it's like uh, we have the Solency, we have the Google, and we have Sensidia. Uh, Sensidia just launched a new product, uh, Events Hub. Uh, he is for working with the events, and we do push for the subscribers. Last, uh, the cust you put the, your information, and the customer will plug with us, and we do all the things about security and uh, retry of information and push for subscriber. So. That's it. Thanks so much. Sorry for the step and sorry for my good English. And obrigada. Thank you. Stay a second with us because maybe we'll have some questions from the audience. Do you have any question? Fran? No? <laughs> and if you have any question, because we overstepped the time, right? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, no. Okay. So just a quick, quick question regarding the events have at uh, Sensidia. So you, you said that um, the events have, 
uh, it's to push to the consumers. Yeah. So is it something that you plan to be configurable, like consumers can do pull? Yeah, maybe in uh, version two. But today we make the implementation for the cons the customers. Will plug with us. We do all the steps of authentication, send the callback uh, endpoint, and then we do the notification. Uh, send the notification from a partner, and we send the notification. But for uh, the customer do the pull do the pulling, uh, we may problem it not now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Do we have other questions? No? Everyone knows how to do async APIs already? We do everything, guys. Fantastic. That's beautiful. Thank you, Anna.